This is a story of Dave and Sharon finally living their dreams of sailing to the Caribbean and beyond. It all started with a conversation while raking leaves. Instead of being tied to one place, we decided to leave everything behind and begin a life of adventure. Our daughters were out of high school and it was time to move on. We bought a sailboat, which was an Amel Mango, and spent time getting it ready for our adventures. Join us while we share our adventures from getting the boat ready and embarking on our cruising life. It's a beautiful day and we decided to pull out of Onset Harbor and head northeast through the Cape Cod Canal to sail in Cape Cod Bay. The Cape Cod Canal opened more than 100 years ago. Construction began in 1909 and was officially completed in 1916. Vessel traffic steadily increased and there ended up being many accidents. The canal often had lengthy closures. The mariners feared the swift currents and narrow bridge openings. In 1928, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers took over the canal and massive improvements began. This included building fixed bridges that were 135 feet high and could accommodate large vessels. When you're going under the bridges with a sailboat, it looks like there might not be enough room, but there is. Here's the other scary part. <laughs> Both bridges connect Cape Cod with the rest of Massachusetts. Traffic from the west typically used the Bourne Bridge, and it is also a direct route to Falmouth, where you can ride the ferry over to Martha's Vineyard. The Sagamore Bridge is on the northeastern, and much of the Boston traffic will use this bridge for easy access to the rest of Cape Cod. At the western end, a vertical lift railroad bridge was built that was lowered only to allow rail traffic on or off Cape Cod. A few years later, the canal was widened and deepened to allow larger vessels access. They also straightened and lengthened the approach to the canal on the western end in Buzzards Bay. This improvement saved mariners from having to go around the outer banks of Cape Cod which is about 135 miles out of the way. Boats have a maximum of two and a half hours to go through the canal. That sounds easy, but if you don't time the tides right, then you can be pushing against a six knot current. These bridges handle a lot of traffic, so it's nice to be able to just go under them and enjoy the day. Cape Cod. Kind of sailor there, there, and we're kind of sailing this way. Just generally came out of the canal right here and sailing with the wind abeam. Sharon's out there taking some video on her phone. And here's Cape Cod. All of that continues up that way and loops around. Actually off to our port even more. Pretty much when you get the sails tuned just right, don't have to touch the steering wheel at all. I don't have uh, I don't have autopilot on because I don't none of them work. Get this little thing down here, but the belt's too long, and this part's all messed up. You notice we're going 166, and uh, we're not at 166 there. So 
Look at that, sailing all by herself. Get the tune, the sails tuned just right. So we're on the lean a little bit here. Heading back to the canal. Looks like we're gonna get some thunderstorms, but we might be able to make it home before back to the uh, yacht club before any of that happens. And right now you can see we're now we're sailing there. Sail nice. Could be tighter, but we don't have to stress her. We're just gonna go head right back in. There's a green buoy up there. Right here, we're gonna head right down over here. I got a quick route on here. Should take us right down near. You know, we'll just head for those green buoys. That's all I can see right now. I can't see the red ones. That's all we need to get in. Basically, that power plant is a good, uh, uh, a good thing to head for because that's just the beginning of the canal on this side. Easy to find. So we went out on our little cruise today. I'm doing the sailing while Dave has lunch and I'm finding that it's easier if I just do the sailing and he does all the deckhand stuff, the crew work, whatever, pulling in the ropes and stuff. So there's storms coming so I am sailing back while he has his lunch and I'm discovering that it's August and it's cold. Boy, we're gonna freeze going south of here. So, I, um, I'm i watching the horizon at the same time I'm talking. So that's why I'm not paying attention to the camera. But it is, I don't know, I'm gonna have to dress warm by the time we do go because it's gonna be cold. <laughs> if I'm cold on just a summer day, I mean, I have a sweatshirt on and shorts, but the wind is blowing and it's cold for me. It's gonna be even much colder. But that was it. Bye. So you can see right here, going back into the canal. This is from the north end of it. Or probably what they call the east end of it. To me, there's north and the south on it. And there's a power plant right there. Breakwater. Everybody on there swimming and I don't see any fishing, but they're swimming. Swimming off the breakwater. Breakwater over here with people on it. All the nice houses. And um, this is the uh, convergence zone for the currents. Currents coming and going right here at the mouth. Some for some reason right around the north, the uh, Sagamore, whatever the the first bridge we hit. It's got a convergence zone there. Then it should be smooth sailing. We are going probably against the current because we're only going three, two point three, three knots, whereas we were doing seven, eight knots coming out tide's going up so once we get about halfway through we should have uh, the current with us so this and is time for cocktails and yeah. time for cocktails we didn't video getting back on the mooring ball because that's like landing an airplane it doesn't always go smooth <laughs> and it was kind of rough this time it was a little bit windy but we did it Packing to go, and Sharon's on a conference call. Still stuff to clean up, but not. It's getting better.